If you're building a software-based live keyboard setup, then this video is for you. We're gonna be going over the four elements of a live keyboard setup, and I'm also gonna be showing you some options for the types of things you can purchase to really get started on the right foot. So let's go ahead and pop in. Brett Pontecorvo here from LiveKeyboardist.com, where I help keyboard players just like you with building a stable live keyboard setup with the ins and outs of sound design and with mastering live performance software. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so on the screen right now, you'll see I've got up the four elements of a software-based live keyboard setup. And the first thing that you're definitely going to need is a MIDI keyboard or a keyboard with audio, whatever you prefer. However, I will say that I perform exclusively with a MIDI controller and do not find that limiting in any way. The second element is going to be some sort of live performance software. And for that, I highly recommend checking out Gig Performer or Ableton Live. Depending on exactly what you need to do, one of those might be better suited for what you're trying to accomplish. The third thing you're definitely going to need is an audio interface as a way to send the sound out of your computer and into the speakers that you're going to hopefully be using to listen to your sounds. And then, of course, you're going to need some speakers. You're going to need a way to hear what you're playing. So let's jump in uh, to some specific items that I think could be really helpful for you if you are just getting started. So first off, we need a MIDI keyboard, and we need something that feels good to play. Now, if you're used to playing piano or something that is weighted, then you are gonna want a fully weighted controller. But if not, you can possibly save a little bit of money here by going with something that's semi-weighted. So if you are in the market for something that's semi-weighted, I absolutely love Arturia products, and something that's definitely worth checking out is the Arturia Keylab Essential 88. The reason I really like this keyboard is it's got a spot for your laptop right on the keyboard itself. It's got a couple of built-in knobs and faders, um, and it feels pretty good to play. Now, this one is a semi-weighted version, so if weighted keys are important to you, then you'll want to check out the next one here. Um, but this is a really good option. I actually play on a fully weighted version of this keyboard regularly and absolutely love it. Um, this one, new, $364, which is not terrible, um, especially when you consider prices of some other more expensive models. It's a really great place to get started. Now, if you care more about weighted keys and that feel, then it's definitely worth checking out the M Audio Hammer 88. Now, I play this keyboard at my church all the time. It's got a fantastic feel. It is fully weighted. There's a really good response to it. The only downside, which by the way, maybe won't be a downside for you depending on the approach you end up taking, is that you'll see this has no knobs and faders. Now, me personally, I don't use the knobs and faders even on my key lab. So if I were starting from scratch buying a MIDI keyboard, this is what I would buy because I don't want to use those built-in knobs and faders because there's a way that I like to do it. I'm actually going to link up above if you want to see how I control my sounds. Um, but this is a really great option um, if you like the heavy weighted feel. It's a little bit more expensive, $4.99, um, but this is like the primary driver of your instrument, right? This is like the thing you're going to use to send information into your computer to make sound. So this is where a good chunk of your money can go into getting yourself a really solid keyboard controller. Now, once you've got the keys, you need a way to interact with your live performance software. Now, whether you're using Gig Performer or Ableton or anything else that's on the market, you're gonna need some knobs and buttons because you need a way to control those things. So, I personally use the Novation Launch Control XL. I think they're on the Mark II now. Um, and you can get one of these for $159. What this is going to do is it's going to allow you to control your various sounds. Now, remember, we're playing keyboard here, so we may not even be using a piano sound. We're going to need a way to control elements of these sounds, and this is a really great option. What I like about this is you can have everything kind of set up in one area, so you can have a volume fader for your pianos, a volume fader for your synths, for your horns, and then you can use these knobs over here to adjust parameters on those particular channels. So the way that it lays out is really 
nice. Um, highly recommend this controller. Um, if you haven't checked it out, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. Now, another option, it's a little bit more expensive, is the MIDI Fighter Twister. Now, this might look like it has a little bit less available to you. However, all of these buttons do double duty. So depending on how you interact with them, it's going to send different information into your software. Um, I think this is really cool. And if I was starting over right now, I probably would go with this because it takes up a little bit less room. It's a much smaller controller, but it still gives you button capability by pushing on it, twisting capability. So anything that I could be doing with my Novation launch control, I could certainly do with a MIDI fighter twister and it would leave a smaller footprint. I think there's something to be said about that. So if you're looking to spend a little bit more, um, get a slightly more premium product, I think this is really worth checking out. Now, one more controller, it's a bit more of a budget option, um, but it's actually the first controller I ever used is this Akai Professional LPD-8 controller. Now, this is smaller, right? Like it doesn't have quite as many bells and whistles as either of those things, but I actually found when I first started playing true keyboard where I was not just playing piano, but I had things I had to control, this gave me enough to work with so that I could control the parameters that I needed to control, but it didn't overwhelm me. So it didn't take up so much space that I couldn't really focus. So this was the added bonus for me. I think I actually had these pads set up so that I could switch sounds on the pads. And then I had just a couple of effects on these knobs and it actually worked really well. So it was a great first controller. If you're looking for a slightly less investment, this one's $59 at the time I'm filming this video. Definitely worth checking this one out. So those are some three options for controllers, which you'll certainly need. Once you've got MIDI going into your computer, you've got a controller so you can manipulate your sounds, you have to get the audio out of your computer and into your speakers. So the way that you got to do this is you just, you have to use an audio interface. You could certainly use the eighth inch out of a laptop. However, use an audio interface. Uh, it's going to relieve some of the processing power of your computer. And it's also going to deliver a better signal. So take the time to maybe do a little bit of research. This video is obviously part of your research, but take the time to invest in an audio interface of some sort. At the end, we'll do a little bit of math here and you'll see even with all of these gadgets, you're still going to be coming in much lower than you would be if you were trying to purchase a pro keyboard. So the one that I personally use is this Motu M4. Now, the reason that I like the Motu M4 is it's not too much. It gives me two inputs on the front and it gives me four outputs on the back. So if I need to run additional tracks when I'm playing, I have the ability to do that. But at home, it's not taking up a ton of space. And at this point, I'm actually not sending out 12 channels when I'm playing keyboard live. Um, Motu, in my opinion, is the best value for the money. And uh, so if you're looking for an audio interface, you're building your live keyboard setup, I highly recommend checking out the Motu M4. It's a really great product. Now, if you're looking for something that is even less flashy, slightly cheaper price tag, and you're never going to be sending out more than two channels, um, check out the Scarlet Solo. I think this is a really great option, especially if you're just getting into this, because it gives you only what you need. Now, since you're using a software-based setup, you're not sending audio into this, really. So the front of this doesn't actually matter to you very much. Um, but what's cool is you can just send your audio out the back. I don't know if it gives you a good picture of that here. Yeah, it doesn't really, but that's okay. You can send your audio out the back, um, stereo signal for your keyboard sounds, and it's going to make it sound good. It's going to be super solid. It's really small, and it's $119, so a lower price tag than the Motu M4. Um, but it's still going to get the job done for you. We've got the sound coming out of our computer. It's hitting the audio interface. We need a set of speakers. Now, the speakers I'm about to share work really well for when you're practicing. But these are not going to be the speakers you want to use when you go to a gig. If you're going to a gig, you're going to need to be plugging into a PA in the house um, or something much, much beefier than what this is. But when you're practicing, having a great set of speakers to build your sounds can be really helpful. Now, here are two different options. So the ones that I personally use are the Yamaha HS5 powered studio monitors. 
Um, these are $200 a piece, so they're a little bit more expensive um, in terms of gear. However, they sound really good. Um, now, I don't mix music typically. It's just for sound design, and I have really enjoyed using them. They've always given me something accurate to work with, so when I go to actually play, my sounds still sound good. So if this is something that's achievable for you to buy, I highly recommend these. Um, on the back, they've got XLR inputs, uh, and they also have um, quarter-inch inputs. So you'll see there's a bit of room control and trim. I don't worry about any of this stuff. Um, it really does work for me, and they actually go quite loud, um, if that matters to you. So these are great options, again, for your practicing. Um, but a lot of times, if you're going to a venue, you're going to be plugging into their sound system. And if not, then you're going to need something much beefier, um, which is kind of outside the scope of this video. So Yamaha HS5, this is a great place to start. Now, if you need something that's a little bit less expensive, um, the PreSonus Eris is a great place to start. Um, it's $100. You get both of them. Um, and these are going to be good speakers. They're not going to be great speakers, but you're going to be able to hear yourself. You're going to get a decent idea of your sounds. And if you learn what they sound like, you'll probably be able to do a really good job with them. Part of it is just training yourself and your ears to really understand what's happening. And as you practice more, you'll get better no matter what gear you're using. Okay, now the final added bonus here is cables. Now, I personally use these cables, um, and they work great for me. Uh, what this does is it goes quarter inch to XLR so that I can plug one end, these the quarter inch end, into my Motu M4 and the XLR end into my speakers. You're going to need a way to plug them in. Now, the HS5s do have a quarter inch audio input, but these cables will get the job done um, there are higher quality cables available, but this is just fine. This is going to give you a really great starting place. Now, one bonus that I want to make sure we talk about is occasionally when you have a setup like this, you actually run out of USB ports. So for that, I use the Cal Digit USB hub. The Cal Digit looks just like this. It sits on my desk. It has a lot of ports. It's got two ports on the front. It's got four USBs and two three USB-Cs on the back. Um, and then there's Ethernet 2, which is not super important when you're playing live, but I do use that uh, in my home studio. And this is solid. It sends all the information I need to send. It's powered, so all of your stuff works really well. Um, and it's something you might need to consider. Now, once you have all of this gear, this is how it's connected. So you're going to have your computer, and that's going to sit in one place. It's going to be plugged into a power source, and it maybe will go into your USB hub, right? So you'll have your Ableton, you'll have your gig performer open here, and you're going to plug into your computer or your USB hub all of your devices, your MIDI keyboard, your MIDI controller, and your audio interface. Then your computer is going to send these sounds to your audio interface, which will go via XLR cables to your speakers or to headphones if you like. Now, if you want to copy of this PDF handout, you can do so at the link in the description below. Let me know, are there any pieces of hardware you recommend over what I recommended here? Let me know in the comments, I would love to hear from you. And I'm actually gonna leave on the screen right now two different videos that will help you get set up with your new gear once you check out some of these options. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time at livekeyboardist.com.